I'm ready to dive in. Here we have a fun little, uh, this is kind of a, a soft steel mirror. One of the things that each player is running in, in these lists is a whole new world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously these decks operate very, very differently based on those other colors, but uh, one of the things that's gonna be fun to see is when each player chooses to use that card, uh, because when you're playing against a deck that also likes to use a whole new world to recharge their hand, it's a very difficult decision. Yep, we do see that David has a whole new world in his hand, but choosing to put that back, he has that queen, which is a really a lovely card, that little mini queen that has the possibility for that shift target. Yeah, I think it's not uncommon to send back a whole new world. It is a key card for you sometimes, but again, in this matchup, it's a little more tricky. The problem with the whole new world is it, oftentimes, unless you're running the shift and going to sing it on turn two, it's several turns before you can play it. And one of the worst things you can do is draw into a second one, which is basically just a, a dead card. So I think it's not uncommon to send that whole new world back, um, and I'm not surprised to see it done here. And, uh, of course, you do have that aerial spectacular singer that can help you find that card later when you really want it. And that's when you really want to find it. Yes. So this, this matchup's going to be interesting. A couple of key cards I, I want to talk about. The first is on the Sapphire side, Fishbone Quill, um, and some of the other ramp cards. But Fishbone Quill is a big one. One of the things that the Sapphire player is going to be trying to do here is to build up a significant resource advantage through ink so that later on in the game, if Whole New World is played, there's a ton of ink to use to rebuild the board. On the other side, David is trying to build a resource advantage through Singers. He wants to get several high-cost cards on the board and or powerful Singers so that when he draws into his songs or uses a Whole New World to rebuild charge his hand, he can do many inks worth of things with these characters on the board and not have to rely on his ink well. Many inks worth of things. I like that. And Is there's that, that shift queen that we were just talking about and bringing out along came Zeus. And then along came Zeus. That's a fun one to sing. <laughs> it's along came Zeus. <laughs> and I he, found that amusing. Ah, yes. He, he hurled his thunderbolt there at Smee. And Smee, we've talked about how that card can just be such a really great lore gain early in the game. But David is saying, I'm not going to let you keep that Smee on the board. No, it's interesting because with... Uh, the Sapphire Steel deck, we think of it oftentimes as a more control deck working towards the end game, but we've seen it be aggressive in this tournament, and it can yeah. be aggressive with cards like Smee and some other high lore characters getting on the board early, able to get to 10, 12, 13 lore by the mid game. And on the other side, David is capable of doing the same thing. Um, cards like Lawrence, which have two lore, can come in early, Smee as well. Um, and so both of these decks able to take that aggressive line. And so it, I'm not surprised to see David choose to immediately get rid of that Smee with the queen uh, and maintain that board presence. Yes, and he actually does have both Smee and Lawrence in his hand. Here we see that Lawrence being played. This is a fun card. He does quest for two, like you were saying. He is a 0-4 character, but while he has no damage, he is a 4-4 four -four character with that plus 4 strength. Yes, and we talk about the powerful stat line of Smee being a 3-3 three -three with two lower on turn two. Lawrence is essentially a 4-4 four -four with two lore on turn three. So doing a similar thing, uh, and really it's the questing that you're, you're often looking to get out of him, although he also is a bit oppressive. Although we talk about the, the strength advantage there, it's a, it's, strength is a little worse against um, your opponent's characters when Cogsworth is on the board. Yeah, Cogsworth giving all of your characters that resist plus one and can be, <laughs> can really hold back that ability to clear off your character, your opposing your opponent's characters. <laughs> Something else Cogsworth is doing here, you know, that five stat line makes him a little difficult to remove. David's going to have to devote numerous cards to dealing with him uh, unless he sends the queen. Um, but serving as a five-cost singer here, so Nicholas with several five-cost songs in his hand, uh, four or five-cost, and Cogsworth now able to sing those for free uh, if he would like. Yeah. You know what's fun here is you have that Lawrence that has the plus four strength and also that queen that can give another four strength to a character when she quests. Ah, and unfortunately, David had to let it go, let that Lawrence go into his inkwell, and then that Storm, or Zeus, taking care of the queen. Yeah, so Nicholas, I mean, spending quite a few cards here getting rid of those characters on David's side of the board. He knows the power of singers, and he also, really, more importantly, though, David's really looking to push that lore lead. Sleepy's Flute on the board is a, is a great card to get on the board at this point in the game. Um, it basically starts a clock on a deck with uh, probably around 20 songs um, that Sleepy's Flute is going to represent, perhaps a lore per turn. And it's one of the ways David can close out this game if Nicholas ends up taking control of the board. Yeah, and did you say that Nicholas had a whole new world in hand? Or not I yet? have not. No, I don't mm. see it. 
Um, I, you know, his hand's getting really low. I'm sure he wouldn't mind getting it. But here, I think top decking that Flavisham, it's a great top deck, able to get two cards off that delicious, delicious Fortisphere. The delicious Fortisphere, yes. Not quite as delicious as a Popsicle, but it'll do. It'll do. <laughs> In a pinch. In a pinch. Yeah, David did t play the aerial and was able to pull out another Along Came Zeus. And I think we've just really seen that card, how strong it can be. One of one of my favorite songs in Steel. You know, it's a great card to find uh, because, you know, we talked about uh, during the last match how important it is for these Sapphire decks to get a Flavisham online early to do a mm -hmm. lot of work in the mid-game, draw you two, four, six cards perhaps. And so Along Came Zeus can do a significant amount of damage. Um, to that Flavisham, although that resist one from that Cogsworth there is going to help him out a bit. Just a bit. Yeah, what do you think that that Nicholas is hoping for here? At some point, I think a whole new world. A whole new world. And, which David uh, has ah. and is going to play it. So recharge the board here. Now, David recharge hands. David likes to play this card uh, a little bit more when he has more singers on the board and be able to immediately make use of the songs that he's drawn. Um, luckily, he is able to sing it here and does have some mm -hmm. ink available. But the thing about playing somebody, uh, Sapphire Steel Dex, is when they have a fishbone quill and are able to dump extra cards into their inkwell every turn, uh, in a game where you're going to see multiple whole new worlds back and forth, that's really going to allow Nicholas to build up you know, a, a healthy ink reserve for the late game. Yes, and of course, since he played A Whole New World this turn, he's able to trigger Sleepy's Flute to gain one lore. Like you're saying, it's kind of a, a clock there for Nicholas. Yeah, and I think, you know, David at this point, at some point, would love to see another flute. Um, drew into mm. some cards, but yeah, Nicholas now with the building up his board, that Cogsworth giving that bell resist as well. Um, of course, whenever bell's played, we have to immediately count the ink in the inkwell. <laughs> Take a look eight. what's there. He has eight ink uh, right now. Nine... Eight, Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. We just inked another one. So with Bell and Fishbone Quill, we're able to ink three cards a turn now. And again, just making maximum use of the cards in hand. Um, at some point, playing a whole new world, it starts to feel really un unbalanced um, based on the ink disparity. Smashing that queen to banish her to the discard pile. And then Flavorsham. Taking out Ariel there. Yeah, an unusual <laughs> role for Flavisham. Yeah. He usually likes to sit inside his laboratory, quest a bit. Ah, and another whole new world being played, this time over on Nicholas's side of the board. So David uh, showing what's being discarded, and now we're drawing into cards. And again, with Bell on the board and the Fishbone Quill, that's three cards you can send back from your hand. So as these whole new world, as we see more and more worlds. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you know, that fishbone quill is just doing, going to do some work. We do see another flute in David's hand, and he did pick up a few more songs, as well as the Cinderella singer and a Rapunzel. Yeah, Rapunzel, great card to have. Uh, not as good when you have no characters on the board for her to choose. And yeah. just not a lot of great, great mid-game cards here for David. I'm trying to see. He does have some removal, but nothing to sing. Um, and these Steel yeah. Song decks, if there's one thing they like to do, it's sing rather than playing cards using your ink. Yeah, and Nicholas has really been able to build up. He has a lot of items. He has some good characters there. That Bell uh, getting ready to quest for five. I think he's got nine ink. I think so. Which is, yeah. That bell, questing for five. Anytime a character is on board that's going to quest for, for five, that can be very scary. <laughs> yes, indeed. I never considered Belle to be scary, but she, she is right now for David. Strange, special, but yes. not scary. Yes. <laughs> so here we, we're playing that card, put some damage on, on Belle for two reasons. One, just to play a song. Uh, so now we can get a couple lore out of it. And then two, perhaps drawing into a card that, that'll help us. Uh, but in this instance, uh, we do have a Cinderella who will serve as a three-cost singer for any more cards we draw. And yeah, I mean, not terrible. Getting that second flute on the board and going is, is great. Um, but still, that's another, what, five turns before you're able to close it out with just the flutes alone. Yeah. And that other board, the other side of the board is starting to look really scary. Yeah, and Nicholas is sitting at zero lore right now. But of course, as we said again and again, these Sapphire Steel decks can just swing. And gosh, I, I mean, yesterday I think we saw one of these decks take 17 in one turn. So Nicholas is not out of this. No, not at all. I mean... 
Nicholas definitely with a lot of lore on his side of the board. You have five with the Bell, two with the Cogsworth, and then, of course, requesting for one each turn with the Flavisham. So seven lore represented. We're a lucky dime away from being able to get another five lore off that Bell each turn. And, yeah, it's just... So the problem with Steel... Uh, is it does have removal, uh, but all of its removal, for the most part, is damage-based. And so when you have high willpower characters across the board from you or characters with resist, all of your cards become just a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. And so David, with some, some decent damage-based removal over there, he's got uh, Let the Storm Rage On, Strength of Raging Fire. Um, it's he, just not <laughs> enough. It's just not enough. Yeah, and the only characters he has in hand are uh, a Robin Hood, a one-drop Robin Hood, and the singer, Ursula, so she is a two-cost character that is a singer four, but none of his larger characters that he might want to see at this point in the game. No, at this point, David, I think, is thinking about how he can close this game out with songs. Ooh. Oh, and that doesn't feel good at this point. Uh, and just as I'm saying he wants to close this game out with songs, losing one of your boots doesn't feel great. Rise of the Titans, I think, is in most of these decks to deal with locations more than items, uh, cards like Queen's Castle. But occasionally you find a, a nice juicy item sitting there waiting, <laughs> to be, waiting to be smashed and the Titans going to town on that flute. Yeah, what are David's outs here right now? Because I feel like this game really has kind of swung over here in Nicholas's favor right now. Even though he is behind on lore, we're going to see this drastically change here. Uh, I mean, the flutes were, were kind of an out, but really there's not a whole lot. I mean, at this point, again, singing a whole, finding and singing a whole new world perhaps and recharging your hand, but the, the ink disparity here is really oppressive uh, whenever the hands get recharged and just that side of the board... You have to remove that bell. Yeah. Um, there is not a great way to do it with that. Resi Perhaps another along came Zeus. Uh, will buy you some time. Yeah. Um, yeah. He did choose there to use World's Greatest Criminal Mind to banish Simba. His World's Greatest Criminal Mind is a fun card. You get to banish a chosen character with five or more. And so Simba, of course, be having that five strength is able to be chosen for that. A nice target. Sim is a fun card. We saw him kind of appear near, I think, the end of last set's meta, uh, but it's a fun card at seven. It allows you to either A, look, in, look at the top, draw two cards and then discard two cards, um, so help you find pieces you need, or B, deal two damage to a chosen character when he comes into play and when he uh, quests or banishes the character in challenge. Yep, so David is now up to 13, but yeah, how much lore do we have represented on Nicholas's side of the board here? Many, many <laughs> lore. Um, I think 10. I think he has 10 on board. Three, four, five, ten 10 lore, that's correct. Um, not enough to close it out unless we draw into a lucky dime. Which would be quite lucky. It he does have be. a whole new world there. Looks like he's going to eat a popsicle here, maybe. Yep. Yeah, and whole new. I mean, it's tempting to, to play whole new world or sing it, but at this point, he, I mean, D Nicholas has got control of the board. Uh, clearly, David doesn't have the answers, and so the last thing you want to do is give your opponent an unexpected out. Um, so let's see. We don't have the dime. We have a lot of damage based removal. We have a. We do have a Tamatoa. Um, that would be mm. an intriguing play here. Five ink being exerted for. Ooh, maybe another Cogsworth that I see. Might let it. Uh, yeah, it looks like a Cogsworth. Gosh, when you have double Cogsworth down on the board, at, yep. because Cogsworth gives your other characters resist plus one, so Cogsworth himself doesn't get resist plus one, but when you have two down, then they give each other resist plus one. So now every single character on his board has resist plus one, and of course those two Cogsworth also have ward. Yeah, we're going to need to get some more resist tokens down there because everything yes. with resist <laughs> with just two now. Here we go. We're going to swap those out. Maybe plop those on the Cogsworths and uh, get some more resist there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a, a challenge here. Cogsworth is just such an oppressive card for anything with damage-based removal. And, yeah, it's uh, oof. Game one, going to Nicholas. Man, that Sapphire Steel deck is just... It swings so fast. He went from... It looks like players are just beginning to alter their hands. Um, what do you think uh, David is looking for here? So obviously some singers, maybe starting off with a Cinderella. What else? 
I mean, early singers, you want your first turn Cinderella if possible. You also could consider the, the early shift line, playing the queen, and followed by a queen commanding presence to shift on turn two. Um, one of the options I always like in these Steel Song decks uh, is the whole new world on turn two. It's not always the best play, but when you're playing a deck that has a very scripted first few turns, like you want to go into one jump ahead, do you then want to go into a Fishbone Quill, a Flavisham? You know, your opponent is going to be altering their hand pretty aggressively to find those early game cards. And you can see on Nicholas' side of the board, for example, you do have that Fishbone Quill, that which it will likely keep. So sometimes you can throw uh, some of these control decks off their game plan by forcing them into a really awkward hand. Um, so that is a line available to David if he finds the right cards. Um, alternatively, I mean, you're just looking to get some singers to stick and mm -hmm. for some early removal. Um, but yeah. Yeah, this Sapphire Steel deck, it's been so interesting because, like you said, it is it is kind of a control deck, but it also can be aggressive. It's just, it's very, it's like morph, you know? He can shapeshift into anything that he wants to. That's true. <laughs> I do want to mention, uh, you know, going back real quick, something I forgot to mention on that whole new world play on turn two, that feels extra good when you're on the play mm -hmm. and your opponent hasn't, hasn't been allowed to play their turn two card yet. And, and here, for example, where Nicholas is looking to one jump ahead, if you can interrupt that mm -hmm. uh, by that early whole new world, that's a, that's a fun combo. That is anyway. a fun combo. <laughs> I'm not sure if David has whole new world. He does have the shift queen in hand. He does have a whole new world. And he does have the queen target as well. So that might be exactly what we see here. And a singer, big Cinderella style hearted going into the inkwell. I hope we get to see that card later. It's a fun one. It is a fun card. And one card that I think could uh, help David take this. Mm -hmm. It's a hard card for, for Nicholas to deal with. Yes, with the resist plus two, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So here, I think we're going to see. Oh, we'll see a SME. SME. Mm -hmm. Another great, I mean, uh, David is able to be aggressive early, especially if he draws into or has a Lawrence available on turn three. Um, so getting that SME on the board and questing early is, is a, also a great choice. And over on Nicholas's side, does he have, he has the quill in hand. Ba-boom to your queen. Ah. Mm. Knowing that is available, gets rid of that queen. Um, so now that shift not able yeah, not able to do he that. He does have another one. <laughs> so double the queen. There <laughs> Which, we go. Yeah, see, uh, he puts it down. So we have a queen and our little singer, Cinderella Ballroom Sensation. Uh, she is quite sensational. Yeah, judge reaching in there and making sure that we, <laughs> we rotate that number a little yes, bit. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, here we have that Fishbone Quill. Again, an, another card that I think is key to this matchup. Um, Nicholas probably going to use that, knowing that a whole new world is possible. Get that extra ink in there if we're going to discard those anyway. And back over to David. All right. And here we have that shift queen into a whole new world. So there it is. Um, unfortunately, you know, Nicholas able to get that fishbone quill out um, is, is great for him. Uh, now he can, as these whole new world stack we talked about, make maximum use of the cards in his hand. And drawing into, you know, a lot of his endgame cards, that's not the best hand for Nicholas. I think he has uh, two lucky dimes in there. He does have a bell, which he can play and ink an extra card every turn. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I saw a lot of his endgame pieces. I didn't see a Flavisham, although I may have missed it. Yeah, and we've seen before how key Flavisham really can be in that Sapphire Steel deck. You need the card draw, and that's really, really in the Sapphire Steel, one of the primary ways that you can draw cards. That's, Besides that's true. a whole new world. That's true. Getting Flavisham on is, is important. Um, we did draw into a Cogsworth, which is available here this turn. Uh, Cogsworth is not only because your other characters resist, but is a, is a five-cost singer, bringing some songs, you know, uh, making some songs available. On the other side, a fun combo uh, is uh, Smee and uh, Rapunzel. Yes. Um, Rapunzel is often paired with cards like Mother Gothel, which have damage when they enter play. On the steel side, though, you have Smee, which damages himself uh, several turns in a row, and then you can play Rapunzel to draw a couple cards off of that. There's a fun little combo I thought I'd mention. Cogsworth coming into play now. Bell, bell going into the inkwell. Into the inkwell. Ink well. Oh, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll use that, I suppose. That works. David's hand is looking pretty great. So there's that Rapunzel coming down, healing Smee, and David gets to draw two cards. He also has an Aerial Spectacular Singer in hand, a Lawrence. So he has a Robin Hood or maybe even two Robin Hoods. Like grab your swords. Like his hand is looking pretty good over there. 
Yeah, no, this is this is what the Steel Song deck wants to do. It wants those singers on the board. Uh, David able to to get those to stick around, and now this is yeah, this is where it wants to be. So, looks like questing for four. Wow, David already up to twelve lore here, and like like you said, he he wants those singers out, and he wants them to stay, and that's what he's been able to do this game. He also has that flute out on the board as well that he played last turn, so. He does have one song in hand, but saving that for later right, when it can do a little bit more damage. Grab Your Swords, of course, doing two damage to all characters on the other side of the board. And so David wanting to hold on to that to use at the right moment. Yeah, I mean, just a lot of great options in David's hand. He has the Robin Hood shift line available mm -hmm. if he wants to, able to then quest with Robin Hood for the extra lore. Um, not a lot of songs, but he does have an aerial, which can find another song. Mm -hmm. um, just all the tools. And Nicholas, again, drawing into a really awkward hand, I think, with that whole new world. Yeah, that's, I mean, a whole new world is great, but if it doesn't give you the cards that you want, uh, this is where the, the luck and the skill come into play, is you can be the highest skilled player as can be, but sometimes luck is not on your side. Mm -hmm. Yep, sometimes, sometimes that world is beautiful, and sometimes that world is uninkable. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, grab your swords coming down from Nicholas here. Yes, and, uh, you know, Great card to play in this situation. Not only does it deal two damage across the board and remove some key pieces, but getting those shift targets off the board. You did have a couple there uh, that could have shifted, including that Robin Hood. We know there are two of those in David's hand. Um, also, the Cinderella uh, on the board can be shifted in this deck, so um, getting rid of that option. And left only with the Rapunzel. Yes. And... Did he have another Rapunzel? I was going to say, he I think he another has another Rapunzel. Rapunzel, so he can heal up the existing Rapunzel, draw a few more cards. Ooh, another flute, which is great. Yeah, if you can have double flutes going on, sing some songs. Of course, inking that Robin Hood since he has lost his shift target. Yeah, but here we go. Now representing four lore instead. You know, Rapunzel is a great card, not only for the card draw, but then you're left with a five willpower mm -hmm. character with two lore on the board. Um, and she does some work down there, pushing you towards your lore, uh, you know, your lore target, mm -hmm. even after she's done her, her end of the playability. Uh, so just a challenging spot here for Nicholas. I mean, there, there are some outs. Here we have the whole new world played. Mm -hmm. Of course, David had just drawn three cards, recharged his hand, and so uh, Nicholas forcing David to ditch that, draw seven new cards. And let's see where that leaves us. I think I saw another flute on this side and a whole new world on David's hand. A whole new world's galore. Two no worlds. <laughs> two whole new worlds. And two sleepiest flutes. That would be four yes. flutes. Oh, my goodness. And him sitting at 12, gosh, I think he has five ink in his inkwell. Yeah, this is, so four flutes represents game uh, next turn. I think you have the four flutes if you sing a song, which we have them available, and we have the two Rapunzels, which can quest for two lore. So that's eight lore with the flutes and the Rapunzels alone. Gosh, yeah, David is probably feeling fairly good right now. Nicholas, uh, I didn't see what he drew into with that whole new world. What do you think he is looking for here? Mm, goodness. I mean, the, the challenge is that there's no way to remove those flutes, I don't think. Uh, I have to double check if we're running the Judy Hops. Yeah, he did have Rise of the Titans, but I'm not sure how many copies that is true. of it he has. Let's see here, just two copies of Rise of the Titans. We did already see one this game. So he has another one available, possibly. No Judy Hops, but that's really only the only answer that he has for flutes. And with two on the board and two more in hand, of course, Nicholas doesn't know that, though. Um, it's not much that Nicholas is going to be able to do about that. No, it's just a challenge. And five willpower on those Rapunzels is, is also challenging. Um, you do have a long came Zeus, but without any singers on the board, you're going to have to spend a lot of resources to deal with those four different threats if you have if you even have the options available. So um, I don't know. Oh, so we do have a whole new world. There it is, five getting rid of two lore. So that will uh, hopefully extend the game a turn at the very least. Yep, let it go, of course, putting a character into David's ink well. So he lost a character, but he did gain another ink, which is nice for him. So he is able to lay down both of those flutes, play mm -hmm. a song, and... <laughs> He's going to Strength of Raging Fire his own Cinderella uh, in order to uh, wow. get four lore off those flutes. Uh, so there we have six lore instead of the eight with that other Rapunzel. And now um, 
now it's just a challenge. Yeah, there's there, a challenge before. This is this is just difficult. Yes, there's a reason why it's called Disney Lacana Challenge. <laughs> yes, it is. This is this is a challenge. It is, gosh, and at this level, I mean, all the players at this level are highly skilled. They have carefully crafted decks, and it really is just comes down to: Am I getting the right cards that I need at the right time, and making all these small decisions that lead to a win? Yeah. So now David has to remove that Rapunzel. And then hope that there are no songs in David's hand. Um, it looks like that's just a bridge too far because we're going to scoop these cards up. And we're going to go to a game three. Game three here in the semifinals in this Sapphire Steel, Amber Steel face-off. What do you So Nicholas is going to be on the play here. And yeah, gosh, that those both those games were played so well. It's going to be really interesting. I think, it, like I said, it's just going to come down to who has the right cards in their hand. Both these players obviously are very strategic, making good decisions with what they have, but are, do they have the right answers at the right time for the opponent's board? I, I totally agree. These are two decks that, that have been around a while, too, Rebecca. Are, are either of these decks that you've played or are, are super familiar with? I've played Blue Steel a little bit, but I've, you know, I tried Amber Steel. It's not my style, and I think there's something to be said for finding a deck that fits your, your personality, so to speak. I you totally know? agree. Yeah, so uh, this, what, what about you? The Steel Song deck's not been my thing. No, these are not decks that I, I generally play. I do like mid-range, tempo-y decks. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, I'm an Emerald Amethyst uh, player myself, um, but I'm familiar with them, and I, I, I do like them. But these, are, these are two decks, though, that I think are considered some of the higher skill level decks in the game. Yeah. Uh, de the Sapphire Steel deck is, uh, I played it a little bit, and it is a hard deck to pilot. You need to know what you're doing. There's so many different lines. You need to be able to turn on a lucky dime, really, to change up your plan based on what your opponent's doing, and there's so much available to you, uh, so it does take a lot of skill to learn this deck and learn it well. Yeah, totally agree. So we did see Nicholas. Uh, I, I paid attention to his uh, hand alter. I didn't see what David sent back, but only sending back two whole new worlds, uh, drawing two new cards, <laughs> and uh, definitely had some of the key pieces he needed in the early game. I think I did see the one jump ahead, uh, the early turn or the early game popsicle. So um, Nicholas, kind of happy with the hand he had. David, and I'm not sure what he pulled. We shall see. Yeah, the the. Steel Song deck, I know, has been very popular ever since Scent 1, really. And it kind of went away, came back, but its I feel like it's kind of maintained its place in the meta consistently, you know, maybe going up and down a little bit, but it's kind of always been there. Mm -hmm. It's one of the, I think you'd call it one of the two original decks in, OG. in Norcana. Yeah, <laughs> I do think Steel Song and Ruby Amethyst were two that, that appeared right away. Um, Steel Song is, of course, one of the decks... You know, songs are a very um, important part of Lorcana, mm -hmm. one of the things that makes Lorcana and Disney special. And so Steel Song felt like the perfect deck uh, for, for this game. And uh, yeah, it's been around ever since set one. And people either love it or they hate it. Yes. And we have the queen coming down here. We'll see if it sticks this time. And Nicholas on one of his ideal openings, Popsicle on turn one, one jump ahead on turn two, ramping into turn four, either the Fishbone Quill or the Flavisham available now uh, on turn four. So uh, Nicholas definitely where he wants to be. David with the choice here. So Smee is what he played last time on turn two. We do have the Queen Shift available. I don't see it's Smee going into the Inkwell, actually. And we're going to Queen and we're going to go wide here. And this is not, I mean, this is a this is an interesting play. Um, Nicholas does have a lot of target removal. He also has grab your sword, uh, and we actually see that he has it in hand. Um, but that is the only way to deal with a wide board, and there's nothing right now to sing it. So David kind of taking a gamble, going wide here, and trying to close out the game with lots of characters, which would be difficult for uh, targeted single removal cards to deal with. David does have that shift queen and a whole new world in hand, and also another Smee. So we did see one go into the inkwell, but he has one waiting in the wings. Let's see, uh, both players thinking here. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was I, kind of waiting with bated breath here. So I know. Nicholas, I think he's, he's still deciding what to ink, which... I know that that, you know, besides altering your opening hand, which is such a key piece to Disney Lorcana, the other thing that is really strategic is deciding what to ink. Yeah, this is, this, talk about this play. Like, there are some plays, you know, that 
I, I think are fun to talk about. This is one. There's a lot of players, I think, especially newer players, who would say Flavisham is the right play here. You want to get that card draw going. And we consistently talk in these Sapphire decks about how Flavisham is an engine you need to get going in the mid-game. But this deck has a whole new world. And we've talked again earlier how getting that fishbone quill on the board, allowing you to make maximum mm. use of the cards in your hand as they're being wheeled, is super important. So Nicholas inking the Flavisham instead of putting it on the board, getting that fishbone quill online, prioritizing that. And I think it's paid off here because yes. not only do we get the extra ink last turn, that would have otherwise been discarded. But now, as the wheels continue to wheel, um, he can make maximum use out of the ink in his hand. Yes, and that fishbone quill didn't get put in the discard with a whole new world. It stays there on the board. Yes, now, so another interesting conundrum here, though, is that we do have a wide board here. We have a lot of two-strength characters. We did have Grab Your Sword available last turn on turn five, and David just wheeled that away. Uh, interestingly... Grab Your Sword is a card that kind of faded a bit from the meta, or people thought it would, once the Bucky errata happened. Because it was a card that dealt efficiently with uh, Bucky, it dealt with Diablos, and so I think people, and it was in a lot of decks just for that reason. Um, and so I think a lot of people who ran smaller characters hoped it would kind of fade. But Nicholas running three of them in this deck, uh, kind of not choosing to to move many of them mm -hmm. out. Um, one of them was is in the discard pile, but there's still two available to deal with this whiteboard. Oh, along came Zeus here, throwing that thunderbolt at that queen, and then taking out Robin Hood, which, you know, that Robin Hood and then the big Robin Hood that can come in as a shift character. We have not yet seen David play that Robin Hood because Nicholas knows that he has it in hand, and so every time he sees that little Robin Hood come out, then he won't let it stay on the board. So get out of here. Yes, and we have Ariel singing here. She says, look at these songs. Aren't they neat? adding more songs to hand, and then questing here with a queen and a Cinderella. Gosh, that's so interesting to me that, that the queen and the Cinderella are the two cards here on the board. These, you know, both one-cost characters staying here and, you know, just questing a couple, t you know, getting a couple lore each turn. And sometimes... Those little, you know, micro gain, lore gain is what wins the game in the end. Yeah, absolutely. David uh, it, it has kind of a, an awkward hand here. Not, not terribly great. He does have the whole new worlds there. Uh, I think two of them, actually, which he could use to recharge his hand. But uh, the Robin Hood, he'd love to shift that Robin Hood into play if he can, uh, and then perhaps sing, but can't because, as you pointed out earlier, that shift target was removed. He has two grab your swords, mm -hmm. which are not great cards in this scenario. Did draw into a, a Rapunzel, so that's kind of nice, allowing you to draw um, a couple extra, or an extra card here. I think we only have Healing one up damage. Ariel, um, yeah, which is your singer. You can sing with uh, Ariel pretty much every song in this deck. I think uh, five cost songs are the highest. Singing, grab your swords, have and strength, strength of, of a Raging, raging Fire. fire. And okay. that's the strength of this deck is, is yes. allowing you to use your characters. And at Tinkerbell, a big threat here, uh, any mm -hmm. exerted character that she can banish, she can then t choose another character for another two damage, and it's a way to clean up big boards. Um, so David here prioritizing removing that. But again, his hand, he's got another couple, gra two grab your swords? At least one. He has two, two whole, whole new, new worlds, worlds when one grab your sword, and then he has that queen commanding presence in hand as well. Yeah, but I mean, the whole new worlds, uh, they're not super appetizing in this scenario because mm -hmm. Nicholas has managed to get, look at how many cards he's managed to put in his inkwell with that fishbone quill. Um, I'd venture to guess he'd, he'd be happy to play a Tamatoa here. Um, and so, you know, David with all those, or Nicholas with all those resources available, um, you know, not a lot of options in the hand. Fortunately, he's managed to build a pretty big board, though, um, at this stage in the game. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And so unless another grab your sword is drawn, yep, so we have Popsicle going to the discard pile. Ah, uh, yes. To bring back the, uh, by the Tematoa to draw a card. And we drew a Fortisphere, which we'll probably immediately play to draw a card. And I and didn't... And it loops and it loops. And I, I may have... I just saw it in a flash, but I may have seen a Lucky Dom getting pulled there. I could be wrong. Well, that would be fun. Yep. <laughs> Maybe it was maybe it was just me. I don't know. Yeah. All uh, right. What was interesting <laughs> about that? I, I just want to point out for folks watching that may not know, he chose to banish the popsicle and put it in his discard. And popsicle has the ability where you can uh, choose to heal a character 
two damage from, with the popsicle, but you don't have to. So he did not choose any character. He just decided to banish it just so that he could bring it back with the Tomatoa. It's a, it's a may do, not must do. Yeah. In a pinch, he also could have chose to remove two damage from Rapunzel. Had yes. no damage on it. Yes. <laughs> so. And uh, one of the answers for Tomatoa is definitely world's greatest criminal mind. And luckily, David had that card in hand and could sing that crab back to the realm of the monsters. <laughs> and this, is, again, will highlight the strength of the Seal Song decks. Having all of those high-cost singers on board, you recharge your hand, you can immediately sing songs um, and do some work. So Nicholas with a significant ink advantage, but all of those singers over there are able to mm -hmm. do significant work for David. Yeah. Um, Nicholas really needs to get a high-cost, high-strength character to stick to start removing some things or perhaps draw into a grab your sword or two um, or some other targeted removal. Yeah. David has challenge. eight lore on board, so that's two turns, unless Nicholas is able to find some answers here. What answers do you think are available here to Nicholas? Uh, gonna, I mean, the, the wide removal is what you need here. Um, you're going to have to get a, a character or two to stick. At this point, you'd even like to get, you know, a few Smees on the board. Hopefully you drew into something, uh, you know, a few things that you could put down to go wide. Um, a grab your sword or two. It's just, it, it is a challenging situation. There is no be prepared in this There's, deck. There is no be prepared. <laughs> yep, he's got, let's see here, I saw a bell in hand. Yeah, you know, there's what so else? many items on board. There's also a line Tinker where you... Tinkerbell? Tinkerbell, that's not a bad option. Uh, clear out one of those characters, and then anything left exposed next turn, uh, you can challenge into and perhaps banish two characters. But the, the problem, again, is when you give a Steel Song player a grip of full cards, they're likely to have a Strength of Raging Fire, Along Came Zeus, things that can deal with those cards. We do have a Strength of Raging Fire in David's hand, so that Tinkerbell is probably not going to survive this next turn. Yeah, and there's also a Sleepy's Flute in hand as well, which is just really going to put David in prime position to take this third game. Of course, uh, each of these players has taken one game here in this three-game match, and so either of them could move on to the finals, but right now it's looking really like it's in David's favor. Yeah, so let's see what we do. I think we're going to ink here. We may play the Bell, no, we're going to two cost. So I'm trying to think. Cause it, so there's so many items in board. That there is a line here where if, if Nicholas can do enough to remove a, a few things from David's side of the board, he has so many items in play. Tamato with a lucky dime will enable him to close this game very, very quickly. Boom! Here, so here on Ariel. We're making the choice to get rid of Ariel Spectacular Singer. I was going to say mm. instead of a two lore character, but we're going to move the two lore character as well. <laughs> um, so both the Queen and Ariel sent to the discard pile. We're left with it with four lores worth of Rapunzels. So we have four lore on the board. Plus there is that Sleepy's flute in hand, so that's potentially five if he's able to sing a song this turn, putting which would put him up at fifteen. Yeah, and I was going to say that that did a couple things removing those characters. It made Strength of a Raging Fire a lot less strong. Um, but now we've drawn into a Let the Storm Rage On, which can do two damage, as well as a Strength of a Raging Fire. We have two more characters anyway, so <laughs> yeah, there we go. Strength of a Raging Fire and Quest. So again, that Tinkerbell, which Nicholas was hoping to use to control the board, not around for very long. Yeah, Nicholas, it seems like every character that he's able to get out that David just has the answer. And David placing the precise amount of lore he needs to win onto the board. Uh, again, I, it's funny with these with these Lucky Dime decks, if Nicholas is given like a turn off, uh, a little bit of room to breathe where he can get a Tamato on the board, Lucky Dime, etc. He could close this very fast, as we mentioned, but um, able to, you know, it has to play offense here every single turn to prevent David from from closing that lore. Mm -hmm. Putting his Flabbersham down here. Gosh, I can't see what else is in Nicholas's hand. Like, what are, what are the outs here for Nicholas? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see. So he does have a let it go, I <sighs> okay. know. So that's, that's a little bit of removal. But again, it's five ink to play. There's nothing to sing it. And it only delays things a little bit. Yeah. Live another turn. 
Oh, which we do. Yep, he is putting one of those Rapunzels into the inkwell here. And, of course, Nicholas doesn't know that there's two sleepy flutes in David's hand right now. So we're inking an Argus. And then now Bell down. Bell does represent five lore. Uh, David counting here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight would be the flute. So all we need to do is play one flute and then a second flute and then sing, <laughs> sing a, song. a song. There it is. And that's eight. <laughs> there it is. It closes out the game. My wow. goodness. My goodness. That What a game. Yeah. I mean, masterful by the, by the Steel Song player. Um, yes. Yeah. David Nunez really, really piloting that Amber